Hey guys, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, and today I'm going to be talking about Last Week in Vegan. As you can see, I'm starting a new segment on my channel where I want to summarize the vegan news from the previous week in one short, easy to digest video. If you love this idea and want more content like this, be sure to like this video and comment below so that I know that you want me to keep making these videos. The first story of the day is that the Impossible Burger made its West Coast debut on Thursday, October 13th. The bleeding vegan burger, the Impossible Burger, is now being carried at two restaurants in San Francisco and one in LA. Up until this point, the Impossible Burger was only available in New York at one restaurant, and it was added after the owner and chef, David Chang, tried the burger and said, I tasted the future and it was vegan. David, I think you're a very smart man. Well, I think this is amazing news. While I don't really want to bite into a burger that tastes like meat and looks like meat and feels like meat, Vegans aren't really the target customer for this product. And I think it's amazing that vegan products that appeal to non-vegans are gaining so much steam in our marketplace. This means so much for the future of our planet and the animals, and I am so for it. The second story of the day is that TripAdvisor bans ticket sales to attractions that allow contact with wild animals. In early 2017, TripAdvisor is planning on launching their no touching of wild animals policy, leading them to ban ticket sales to any attractions that involve humans coming into contact with captive or wild animals. So this means no more elephant rides or petting zoos or swimming with dolphins, at least not if you want to buy your trip through TripAdvisor. The thing that I'm most excited about with this story is that TripAdvisor is not just banning ticket sales to these attractions, they've also worked with humane organizations to pull together an education portal for anyone who is interested in those kinds of attractions. The way that this is set up is that TripAdvisor will still have all of these attractions listed on their website. They simply won't allow you to buy tickets through the website. So if you click on these listings for attractions that involve contact with wild or captive animals, it will bring you to this education portal where they have a wealth of information to educate this person in why contact with wild and captive animals isn't actually a good idea. While TripAdvisor isn't the first company to do this, it's still an amazing step in the right direction. TripAdvisor is a huge company and this impact will be felt worldwide. One problem that I have with this change is that it doesn't quite go far enough. TripAdvisor will still be selling tickets to attractions that involve viewing captive and wild animals, just so long as there is no actual physical contact, which means they're still selling tickets to SeaWorld, for example. I've written an article on SeaWorld specifically, as well as zoos in general, and why they're problematic, so check those out if you want more information on that. The third story of the day is that dairy farmers have dumped more than 43 million gallons of milk. The USDA has recently released data showing that dairy farmers across the US have dumped more than 43 million gallons of dairy into lagoons, onto fields, and into animal feed in just the first eight months of 2016. This is the largest overproduction of milk recorded in the last 16 years. Just last year, a checkoff program called Dairy Management Inc. spent $30 million trying to push excess dairy onto consumers. Dairy farmers are also trying to partner with schools to have more dairy included in school lunches, as well as fast food chains like McDonald's and Taco Bell. Along these same lines, a huge overproduction of cheese this year prompted the USDA to issue a $20 million bailout to dairy farmers this August 2016, and a $7 billion bailout to animal feed producers this month. I find this news both utterly horrifying and very exciting. Obviously, the idea of this much product going to waste is a bit horrifying. It really drives home how many animals are suffering in the dairy industry, and the fact that they're suffering is literally for nothing. Now, obviously, there's a more optimistic way to look at it, which is that the fact that there's so much overproduction means that the dairy industry is going to have to start reducing production. They cannot afford to continue to overproduce at such a huge scale. So this means that less and less animals are going to be bred into this cruel system, and that is a win no matter how you look at it. 
Of course, the US government is doing its best to prevent the dairy farmers from feeling this loss as harshly as they should. But I still have hope that dairy farmers will recognize that their line of work is no longer a desired one and move to more humane alternatives. To continue on with the dairy and cheese line of thinking, our fourth story of the day is that apparently cheese, as long as it's vegan, is now going to be called Gary. So this person got really mad that vegan cheeses can be listed as cheese since they don't have dairy in them. And in her long Facebook rant suggested that we call our cheese anything other than cheese. Why not just call it Gary? And then tons of people responded by creating memes and even Facebook groups referring to vegan cheese as Gary. This Facebook page, for example, it's not vegan cheese, it's Gary. It's led to this meme and this meme and also this meme. So that's a thing. The last story I want to touch on today is the fact that Tyson Foods has invested in Beyond Meat, a vegan food company. Tyson Foods spent an undisclosed amount of money to purchase 5% stake in Beyond Meat. Beyond Meat's Beyond Burger, which is a competitive product to the Impossible Burger that I talked about in the first story of the day, also bleeds when you cook it and has a whopping 20 grams of protein. It's so similar to meat that Whole Foods are stocking it right beside the meat in the frozen aisle. Ingrid Newkirk, the president of PETA, had this to say, we at PETA are beyond delighted, pun intended, that Tyson has decided if you can't beat them, join them. And I must say that I completely agree. I think this is a great step forward, showing how much even those who are directly involved in animal agriculture and animal food products are aware of this shifting to more ethical options. A company like Tyson Foods has so many resources that having those backing a vegan company is really an incredible step forward. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like it if you did and subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos coming out every Monday and Saturday. Let me know in the comments below which story you found most interesting and your thoughts and opinions on them because I wanna hear them. And also let me know if there's any important stories that happened this week that I missed out on. Until next time, bye guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on social media. Check out my blog, plantbasedbride.com. Like this video and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, if you love what I do, to consider supporting me on Patreon for as little as $1 a month.